as a uh, as individual uh, Christians uh, and as a church, <clears throat> I'd like for us to be like the people that are recorded back in First Chronicles chapter twelve and verse thirty-two. In in that context back then, there there were some people that were that were getting together to make David the king of Israel, and so there are some things that are listed. Uh, there's tribes that are listed, people that are listed, and things that they did <clears throat> that they were trying to bring this into being. But what it says about a certain tribe here, it says the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. <laughs> That's what I would like for us to have, an understanding of the times that we would know what should be done in our own lives, in the, lives of our, in the life of our church, and in our country. Folks, we are, we're living in some, I, I, in fact, I, I, I've told some people even this week, uh, that, and I think probably most everybody here uh, could, would say this. Uh, myself, since I have been an adult, uh, and there was, a, there was a certain time period even before, I mean, in my uh, adolescent years, uh, uh, too, I was faithful in church. There was a time there that I wasn't, okay? Uh, but for the most part, since I've been an adult, I cannot, I don't believe there's ever been a time in my life that I went eight weeks without going to church. Eight weeks. Does it seem, folks, we haven't had church for eight weeks. <laughs> that, that's crazy, isn't it? It doesn't seem like it's possible. And if somebody would have told us, in fact, I want to say this, you know, we're not that far into this new year, 2020. But if somebody would have told us going into the new year about some of the things, not just this, not just the pandemic, but some other things that's happened already in our individual families and, and, and in the world, if somebody would have told us these things that were, that were going to happen in 2020, this coming year, we'd have said, ah, I can't, I, I can't see that, can't see those kinds of things happening. But boy, they are, aren't they? And so, yeah, we're living in, in very, very difficult times. And there's a word that's on the lips of uh, pretty much uh, everybody uh, today is coronavirus and the coronavirus pandemic. You know, one of the things that's so tough about this is families, we can't even visit the way we normally do. There were some weeks that Sherry would come and visit us and she would stand out on the porch with a mask on and talk to us through, that, through the door. Darren, he finally came down yesterday, first time we'd seen him. We'd seen him one other time since Christmas. And he came down and his first, at first he said, I can stay outside. He said, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not going to stay outside. Just come on in. We can still keep our social distancing here in the house. But he was worried because he was afraid that he would bring something into us. And so it's been so difficult. Phyllis and I have, have uh, six great-grandchildren. Now the six great-grandchildren, we only have one girl. We have, we have one great-granddaughter, Della. And you all have met little Della before. And uh, our, our uh, grandson, Austin, uh, he works out, and so he hasn't been able to see Della during this period of time. And bless her heart, she understands, and she, she calls it that old crona. <laughs> I, miss, I miss my daddy, and uh, it's that crona. She doesn't say corona, it's crona. <laughs> so many people from, from little child up, it's, it's been on our, uh, on our lips. We have a, <clears throat> you know, Wednesday night Bible study, there was a band. It seemed like this has been forever since we did that Wednesday night Bible study when this stuff was just first getting started. And we talked about pandemics, talked about the difference in an epidemic and a pandemic, and, uh, and talked about the fact that <clears throat> these pandemics are becoming more and more all the time. As time goes on, it seems like we're having more and more uh, pandemics. And so we saw that and we see that as, as a sign. Now, when we think about this, Think about uh, this uh, COVID-19, coronavirus, the pandemic that, that we're going through. There's been different responses, hasn't there? One, one response it, there have been, uh, with it, there have been people that have minimized it. Starting in China. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? They minimized it. Folks, it, they could have stopped this stuff at the, in the beginning. They could have kept it at an epidemic. They could have stopped it right there. And uh, they were not allowing, within their own country, not allowing people uh, to, uh, to go from back and forth between Wuhan and other, and other areas. 
but they let people travel outside of China all over the world. And they released this virus all over the world. And I have said from the get-go that when I think about how it started and, and all of that, uh, that it, you know, it started there in, in, in China, and I don't know, I still don't know, Phil, uh, folks, and I don't know whether any of us ever will, whether it was intentional or not. Because we need to keep in mind that communist China, they want world dominion. And so whether they released it on the world, I don't know. They want to be looked upon as being a world power, and they want to make the United States look bad, and they want to take the place of the United States on the world stage. We may talk about that a little bit more as we move along. But they minimized it. It wasn't just them. We have people in our own country. How many people, how many, I may call some names this morning. Uh, how many people remember Nancy Pelosi in, in uh, uh, Chinatown, San Francisco Chinatown? Oh, it's all right. Just come on, fly out here. We're having a big time inviting people to come. I'm going to mention another game, another name. The governor of New York. What's his name? That's right. And Como said it's not going to really affect New York that much. They became the epicenter. It's worse there than possibly anywhere in the world other than Wuhan. <laughs> Right? And so people were minimizing it. And people were saying, oh, you know, it's, it's not just, it's no big deal, you know, it, it, it's going to be all right. It's probably just kind of like the flu or maybe like even the common cold, that sort of thing. But don't get all excited. So they were minimizing it. And then we had some folks that were maximizing it. <laughs> Reports, they, be, they begin to surface. The projections came out. There's going to be millions Millions of people all over the world that, that, uh, that, are, that are going to be uh, uh, sick with it. Uh, and there's going to be at least, what they were saying, even in America, possibly two million die in America. And so they were maximized. They had some kids, especially kids, but not just kids. I mean, my, my two adult children, I think they've been <laughs> pretty messed up by it. But all of a sudden, people got, they were scared, just scared to death. And so some people were maximizing it and forgetting that, Forgetting this fact that the Lord's in control. Amen. He is in control and he's allowing it to happen. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as, as we go along. Now, let, let me say this uh, too. I was talking to Brian Gill, the pastor at Perkins. Uh, they have, they're, I think they're starting their church back again in June. But Brian called me the other day. And we, we started talking about this, uh, uh, this guy, uh, uh, Mike... Uh, Evans is his name, and he's written a new book, and uh, his, uh, his new book, uh, I can't even recall the title of it right now, but with, with the new book, uh, what it's all about, I don't know how, if this name brings a bell to, to everybody, but David Wilkerson, David Wilkerson was the, uh, the founder of Teen Challenge, he was the author of The Cross and Switchblade, uh, he was the, uh, the founder of the uh, Times Square Church in New York, New York City. And so, uh, one day, he, David Wilkerson was friends with, this, with Mike Evans, and he wanted him to go to lunch with him, and he did. And he told him, he said, the Lord has revealed to me that there's, there's going to be a plague that's going to hit. And it's going to be, I think he even mentioned worldwide, I don't think he used the word pandemic, but it's going to hit. And he said, uh, uh, New York City is going to be one of the worst places hit in the world, New York City. And he said, but, he said, what I see coming out of that, what the Lord has revealed to me, there's going to be a third great awakening in America. <laughs> Amen? Now, Brian and I were talking, and both of us agreed on this. Well, you know, usually if somebody tries to, you know, they make some kind of a prediction or something, if that comes true, has that come true, by the way? Come on now. What he said first, he said, well, if the first part, we know that came true, we're praying that the next part does come true. Amen. We're praying that there is a great awakening in America. Did you ever think that you would see, even on CBS News, and especially, well, Fox, is, it didn't surprise me to see it on Fox, but especially CBS News, you would see Franklin Graham speaking <laughs> and giving the plan of salvation and the sinner's prayer. And one, I, I don't know how you all were during this time, I was, it was like going to a Bible conference for me every Sunday morning. I listened from five to eight preachers every Sunday morning. 
<clears throat> and, and one of them in particular, I heard him say that uh, like the week before, by the way, some, a lot of these were re already, re they were pre-recorded, but there was one or two of them that would be current. And one of them said uh, that uh, the, like the week before, there was, there was like, uh, uh, I think one report I heard, and this is a different church, I think it was 1,500, and I think he said 1,000. 1,000 people were saved from that Sunday before from their telecast, that people called in that they had been saved. And when I think about what's going on, folks, I think people should be getting their eyes opened up, amen, that Jesus is coming soon. And we're going to look, look into that just a little closer. I'm going to get to the Scripture passage in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, but talking about responses that people have had to this virus, uh, some have tried to optimize it, meaning they have used it for personal gain. Can you believe that in the United States of America, people would use a pandemic for personal gain? People were price gouging on, on face masks that were in such demand. People were price gouging for those. Sand sanitizer, man, it was like gold. Sand, hand sanitizer became liquid gold. And you get online and try to get it. In fact, Phyllis got online. <laughs> she got online and bought some, some hand sanitizer. Going to sanitize our house, right? Got it back. We didn't know what. I said, well, I thought it was Amazon. I said, this came from Amazon. What? She said, oh, I bet that's that sanitizer. Uh, have you ever tried to uh, surprise someone with a gift and you'd get a great big old box and you'd stuff it with everything and then inside there would be something real small? You got it. I don't know what it, there, is that it? Are you too embarrassed to tell us what it costs? You're too embarrassed. Okay. I rest my case. <laughs> Okay, but people were using it for personal gain. People setting up uh, stations to, uh, to test people that were fake. People were in different places were even going door to door trying to take advantage of this and trying to pad their own wallets through this pandemic. It's just un unbelievable. So some were trying to, to optimize it. Boy, here's a big one here. <laughs> some were trying to politicize it. <laughs> hey, Amen. Some were and still are trying to uh, politicize it. Uh, there were some, you know, by the way, are you, are you thankful for those stimulus packages? Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to have anybody raise their hand about who got their stimulus and so forth, because I know that some have and, and some haven't. I will say this, though. I don't know what's happened to this situation. Now, a child at home is supposed to get $500, right? Our granddaughter, Maggie, got $1,200. And so far, Sherry hasn't gotten anything. I'm afraid that, that Maggie got Sherry's. <laughs> you talk about trying to work something out there. That might start World War III. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, but, but people have, you know, there's some that, said, that, that have looked at it, what's going on, and said, oh, this is a great chance for us to do some great things in America. And let's start over again. Have you heard some of that? Let's get the Green New Deal going. This is our chance. And one part of the legislature, they, they had a package together and uh, they were going to present it. By the way, if that would have happened, you'd have got your stimulus checks a whole lot sooner. But the lady that I mentioned out in California, she came back to town. And when she came back to town, she started trying to add so many things to this. One was she wanted to increase, she wanted, she wanted to give a bunch of money to Planned Parenthood, which basically is a mother of abortions using your tax money and my tax money for abortions. So many things, they, and, and doing some things with the, uh, with the airlines, they want to, to put, uh, add on some things with, uh, and put a, a check on the airlines and all the fossil fuels and all this, trying to add all that stuff to that, trying to totally politicize it. Now, and, and uh, you know, the national media, nobody is, uh, I mean, they're looking at Trump as great. No, so many people that are blaming him, blaming him for the whole thing, calling, saying that he's got blood on his hands. The same, one of the persons that would may say he had blood on his hands, the same, persons that, same person that sent COVID people into nursing homes when he could have sent them on the ship that had been provided. Okay, so we'll, we're going to have to move on. So some people politicize it. Folks, what I want to do for a few minutes this morning is to try to spiritualize it, okay? And see what kind of spiritual impact. Is the Lord doing something 
with this. And I, I totally think that, that he is. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, we're going to read from verses 1 through 9. But the first thing I want to do with it is draw your attention to verse 3. Because in verse 3, there, there are three questions that, that his disciples uh, ask him. They came to him privately saying, tell us when, okay, there's the first question, when these things shall be. The second question is what will be the sign of your coming. And the third is and the end of the age. Now, the time, if you, if you look over, there's a, there's a uh, 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 he answers the, the time in verse 36 of 24, chapter 24. He says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. When Jesus was here on this earth in his physical body, he didn't know at that time. Now he does now. <laughs> okay. He's, he's finished his perfect plan. He's, he's at the right hand of the Father, so he does know now. But he didn't know back then. Only the Father. Angels still don't know when it's actually going to come about. And he didn't spend much time on that part when, but he, but he did uh, on a lot of the signs. <clears throat> now, I, I want us to... Uh, uh, by the way, when, when, in looking at those three questions, uh, the second uh, in, the, in the Greek, what is the sign of, of your coming? That, co that word uh, coming there in the, in, the, in the original language means presence, presence. And so what they were asking Jesus, what, what is the sign of your full presence or when are you going to come and be with us permanently? You see, they weren't really looking at it spiritually. They were, they were looking at it politically. <clears throat> they wanted to get the Romans out of town. Okay, that's what they were, they were finding out, how can we get the Romans out of town? Now, they knew that one day the world was going to come to an end. They looked at that, but how do we get them out of town? So that's why they were asking in that, in that way, when are you going to be able to come? Set up your kingdom. When are, you, when are you going to be able to be with us from now on? Okay, so let's look then. Let's back up now and, and read these verses, uh, beginning with, with uh, uh, verse 1 of chapter 24. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. <clears throat> that's significant, folks. When the Bible says here that Jesus departed from the temple, Jesus withdrew from places where he was pronouncing judgment. They had come to judgment. They had rejected him. So he was departing from the temple. Uh, a good case of this is uh, he pronounced judgment on, some, on, on different uh, places, but uh, one with Bethsaida. And in Bethsaida, uh, there was someone, when he was there, they brought a blind person to him. And wanted him to heal the blind person. But he didn't do it right then. He led the person out of town before he would heal that person. Because he had pronounced judgment on that city. He had still deal with people as individuals and heal them. But, but he had already withdrawn from that city. It's sort of like in, in the book of Revelation. You remember there's, there's the, uh, Jesus talks about the church at Laodicea. And he says, behold, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. And so what we need to realize, there are times when Jesus withdraws from, it scares me, folks, that someday that he's going to withdraw from America if we keep letting her go the way she's going. Amen? <clears throat> okay. He says, and his disciples came upon another uh, that shall not be thrown down. Of course, Jesus was talking about what was going to happen in A.D. 70 uh, when they were overthrown and the temple was destroyed. Keep this in mind about prophecy uh, in, the, in the Bible. Uh, Prophecy, many times, oftentimes, there is, a, there is a near prophecy and then one that's going to be later. Okay, and so what, what the Lord is doing with that, when he does that in that way, is showing the people that I keep my word. Okay, here's that prophecy. And while the, many of these people are still living, they saw that prophecy come to fruition. Okay, but also it's to, and, and it's to make his prophecy valid and to say you better be watching for the other prophecies. I've shown you that this one here is valid, so you better be watching. Okay, so in verse 3, now as he sat on the, on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when uh, will these things be and what will be the sign uh, of your coming and of the end of the age. <clears throat> and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ <clears throat> and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. 
Now I want to call your attention to another verse there before we dig in a, a little bit more here. Uh, another verse that, that uh, uh, when, it, when he says all these, all these uh, in verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. In the original language, it uses birth pangs there. The beginning of birth pangs. <clears throat> now, when a lady, many of you ladies have given birth to, to children, to a child and our children. Okay, there's a lot of pain that goes with that, right? <laughs> Lots of pain that goes with that. And, uh, and what the ladies, now more and more now they have the, they have the husbands that are in the room. Uh, with the ladies, but uh, I can remember that over the years, uh, ladies in there, she's she's given birth and she's back and she's she's having a very hard time, and here's the husband. He's outside back out there in the, in the waiting room waiting on somebody to come out or listen to a baby cry or something. <clears throat> okay, so the closer you get to giving birth, the pains come more rapidly, don't they? I mean, they time them. Well, sh da, da, da. I'm not going to go into all that. But they time them, and as the as the as the baby gets closer, the birth pangs get more severe and, and, and come more rapid. Well, you see, this is what Jesus is using here, because we're going to see some things uh, that are going to take place at the end times. But and by the way, the end times that's victory. Okay, that when the baby is born, that baby is healthy. It's victory time, isn't it? Amen. Okay, so here. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of things happen, but at the end, it's going to be victory. <clears throat> but leading up to that time, we have to watch because the birth pains get more and more rapid, closer together as you see time going by until one day the Lord steps out and calls us home. Amen? So I think it's, I think it's a key verse. Now, let's look at some of these things quickly this morning as far as these signs. Uh, the first sign that he uses there is a sign of, of false prophets uh, or a deception. Now, we know there's going to be, in the tribulation period, after the Lord comes back, seven years tribulation, there is going to be a false prophet that will be working hand-in-hand -hand with the Antichrist, okay? And so when, we know that someday there's going to be the Antichrist. But remember, even in the Apostle John's day, he said there are many Antichrists already in the world, okay? So, folks, today, there are many... And, Against, Antichrist, people against. There are many people that are living in the world today that are against Jesus. Amen? They are against Christ. So there's that spirit of Antichrist already working. So there's, but more and more as the time gets near. Now, some of us uh, many times are, are sheltered from, from what goes on even in our own country. Okay? There's something that happens on the other, in Los Angeles or New York sometimes. Now, right now you get a lot of it. Of course, there's a lot of it that we're not getting. <laughs> okay, but a few years back, there's a guy that took out a full-page ad in the L.A. Times. And on, in that ad, he claimed, I am the Messiah. <laughs> full-page ad. Now, we didn't hear about that. I didn't, did anybody hear that? I didn't hear anything about that. But it showed up in the, in the Los Angeles Times. <clears throat> and then there's a guy that told Dr. David Jeremiah, that uh, was a writer in the religious department, he said, I get those all the time. I get people, claims all the time that people are wanting to say that they are the Messiah. <clears throat> now, to, for me, I haven't seen it like that, but as far as false prophets, I told you that I, I watch uh, from 5 to 8, and when I'm, if I'm home on Sunday morning, and I'm either sick or we can't have church, right? <clears throat> and uh, uh, I watch some great, great preachers. Uh, one of the things I realized, boy, they're getting old. <laughs> all these guys that have been my heroes for all these years are getting older. Charles Stanley's 87 years old. That doesn't seem possible, does it? Dr. David, David Jeremiah is 77. All. But anyway, I also run across, I don't stay tuned very long, especially on one channel. In fact, we watch this channel sometimes late at night and then because uh, it's got Western movies on it. <laughs> and, and it's got gun smoke on it and stuff like that, you know. So anyway... Uh, I'm first one up, so I turn on the TV, and, and on Sunday morning, this guy is on there. And it's got a little thing on there that says, uh, I think it's $56. Your seed, $56. If you'll send that, that, that $56 seed, you know, the Lord's going to bless you. <clears throat> well, folks, to me, that's a false prophet, too. Because a person gets on there and tells you 
to send your money to them and, and don't tell you that you've got a local church, that that's the storehouse where your tithes and offerings go. And they tell you to send money to them. And then, and then the Lord's going to really somehow bless you just greatly if you'll send this money. in. And every testimony that I've ever heard, you know, like it's, it's some stuff, you know, this one guy's supposed to send in his 56000 and I don't know, a week or two later, whatever, he got a check for fifty six or whatever, fifty six or 58000 that paid off his house. You know, what do you hear about that? You don't hear about these others that nothing ever happens, <laughs> right? But they, they, that gets people to think, well, if I'll just give... If I'll just give some money, God's going to bless me. We're going to be, everything's going to be all right. But they don't let them know that there's times that he's not going to bless you that way. He can bless you many other ways. Amen. So to me, that's, that's a person being a false prophet. And, but it, it's getting worse, folks, as the time goes by. Things are just getting worse. And then what about the sign of war or the disputes among, among the nations? Uh, right now. Okay, right now, we are constantly concerned about war breaking out. And we seem like we're in peace, but do we not hear like every, it seems like every day, uh, but we hear about, uh, now, it seems like that right now, we've, we've at least for a while, hopefully, prayerfully, ISIS, we've kind of got that under wraps for a while, but don't give up or don't say that it's over forever because they can pop up at any time around this world. But we have been in fear of, uh, of, of ISIS. We're, we're threatened by Iran. I got to tell you something. There's something that just gets gets to me. I, I'm a little bit. Uh, I guess I've got a little bit of a competitive competitive spirit within me. Maybe that goes back to my ball playing days. <clears throat> but whenever I see one of our ships, and I see one of these little Iranian boats coming by our ships with a with a gun on it, and a, and a guy from Iran sitting up there pointing at our guys like that, folks, I got to tell you. <laughs> I'd like to see us turn on that guy and just send that boat to kingdom come. I mean, that's just me, and I love our country, and I don't want people to make fun of us, amen, or to taunt us out there. We got some military guys here. I know you guys got some of that spirit within you too. Okay, so we, we see that. We're, we're threatened by Iran constantly, North Korea, Russia, China. I said I want to say another word about China. Folks, China has pretty much rose to a world power right now, and we, as the United States of America, have helped them with that. We have given them technology. We've given them weapons. And our biggest deal was we were so much threatened by Russia, we thought, well, if we can make China strong, that will keep Russia down. But now we've made China so strong that now, folks, they're thinking of world dominion. They want, they want to rule the world, and that's the direction that they are moving. Does it, isn't it crazy that they're saying, that they're trying to blame the virus on us? They're trying to say that some of our soldiers, some of our people brought it over there. Now what's crazy, you got some people even in our own country that believe that. Amen? Most all, but, you know, from what I understand about this coronavirus, it's a, it, it, it's a family of viruses. And this, and this family of viruses, we can, I think really for us, we need to be look, looking at that more as the COVID-19, okay, the, the coronavirus infectious in, uh, in, uh, disease, uh, infectious disease that started in 2019. <clears throat> uh, because uh, when I think about this, how this coronavirus and, and how this one started, you know, it, it starts in, in mammals. And, and the, the animals that are, that are mammals, most of the time, it, it's not transmitted from an animal to a human being. But sometimes it is. And the, I think the latest report I've read was there's been like seven that have been transmitted from the, from, the, from the animal to human beings. By the way, who in the world would eat a bat? <laughs> the bat has got to be the most ugliest thing that I've ever laid eyes on. Supposedly this came from a bat. Good grief. Those people need to, and I agree with, with, I think it's Lindsey Graham, we need, first thing we need to do is shut down those wet markets in China, right? But anyway, uh, it's, it's transmitted, this disease is, is, is transmitted into, into humans. And so they didn't let us know that for a while. Boy, there, there's some stories about some of that, some people that tried to let us know have, have disappeared. So this all started, folks, this all started with, with, with China. And China is going to play a role in the end times. In Revelation, chapter 16, verse 12, uh, Jesus 
it's ta and talking about how, and, and inspiring the, the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos, uh, how the nations from the east, is going, they're going to cross the Euphrates River. It's going to be dried up, and they're going to cross the Euphrates River and come upon attack against Israel. Well, guess who that is? That's China. They're going to play a big part in the end times. <clears throat> now, does it, you know, for the most part, we, we talked about these threats, but right now at least it seems that we're, we're, we're at peace. Overall, would you say yes? Huh? Overall, you'd say we're at peace. But now listen to some of these statistics. 50% of all research scientists today are involved in arms development. Despite all the arms limitations treaties, to get this now, there is at least one military weapon and 4,000 pounds of explosives for every man, woman, and child on the earth. I got a three-letter word for that. Wow. Wow. Amen? Enough to blow us all up. Now, think about this, and this is gets kind of where we're at today. The signs of, of devastation, famines, pestilence, earthquakes. And again, they, they're going to be more and more the closer we get to his return. Uh, David, David Jeremiah wrote a book, uh, it was, and, and the title was The Signs of the Second Coming. To, to this morning, we're talking about the signs of time. He's talking about the signs of the second coming. Think about earthquakes first. He said between 1900 and 1969, there were six major earthquakes every 10 years. And then in the next 35 years after that, which would be roughly 69 to 2004, uh, in every 10 years, they, they, they tripled. Okay, the, the amount of earthquakes tripled of how rapidly. Now this one, remember, his last printing was uh, in 2011 of this book. Uh, but he, in that book, he said for the last two or three years, there's been 10 to 20 per year. Per year. Did you know, while this coronavirus, all this has been going on, I remember one, uh, there's been a couple times anyway, that I was, uh, I was watching TV, and they talked about an earthquake that hit someplace, but we didn't pay that much attention to it, because there was something else going on with this coronavirus. So, folks, that ought to tell us something. He says there's going to be earthquakes in various places, diverse, di uh, uh, di different places. Then we ought to realize that's a sign. That is a sign that Jesus is coming soon. What about famine? He talks about famine here. It seems like many times, or so many times, you turn on your TV and, and there's somebody on there trying to raise money for hungry people around the world. Right? I mean, they're always trying to raise money for... For people that, uh, okay, Lord, <clears throat> that are, there are people around the world trying to raise money for them to try to feed uh, people, hungry people around the world. We have millions of people in the world going hungry, even though God has blessed us with a fruitful and abundant planet. Still people starving to death around this world. <clears throat> okay, now the pestilence, the, the, the COVID-19. There's been so much going on now that we, we sort of missed this too, but, but in the last years... Uh, even polio and tuberculosis have been making a comeback. And some of the drugs that we've been using to treat them, as long as many other things, all of a sudden just were, are losing their effect. I remember growing, when I was growing up, penicillin was the miracle drug. Right? They gave you a shot of penicillin for everything, man. Oh, you're sick. Well, you go to the, go to the doctor, and bingo, he gives that shot of penicillin. It seems like you're, you're, the next day or two, you're okay. doesn't happen that way anymore. Now, now a lot of times it's steroids. They replaced the penicillin with steroids. I even, I had a, they even make that steroids in cream. <laughs> I, had, I had something right here I couldn't get rid of, and I got me some steroid cream. Man, that stuff dried up just like that. Now I've found I'm using it for everything right now. <laughs> but it'll fade out. But think about the, the, these, the pestilence, the diseases, folks, that we have seen. AIDS. Still not a vaccine for that. The best, well, I won't go, I got some other area I could go into that, but AIDS, the West Nile disease, SARS, MERS, I mean, on and on and on, these infectious diseases. <clears throat> Listen to this, outbreaks of once isolated diseases are now being spread by airline travel into all parts of the world. Have we not seen that? Amen? Recently. All these signs 
are a sign that Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Now, if you look at verse 9, we're, we're going to close. In verse 9, he says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. <clears throat> well, of the, of, the, of the men that were hearing that that day, that happened. That's another prophecy that came, that came true just like that. Because all 12 of the apostles, other than two, Judas Iscariot and John the Apostle, all, Apostle John, all the other ten, all died martyrs' deaths. And so that, that prophecy came true immediately. <clears throat> now, I want to close with this. Uh, in the book of Revelation, Jesus confirms there through the Apostle John everything that he said back here in Matthew 24. There, there's, there's, uh, there's four uh, horsemen. Uh, there, there, there's... Uh, Time and things that happen in time are, are portrayed as seals, like there's a scroll, and there's seals that are removed that reveals one thing and then the other. And the first, and in fact, these, the horsemen, uh, uh, these first four are called the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The first one is a white horse and a man on a bow, and he's given a crown. And he, the Bible says that he went out conquering and to conquer. Now, I remember being in a Bible class years ago, and I remember, uh, I don't know how many people ever went to the, those Bible classes that were at, <clears throat> excuse me, at SEMO that Dr. Messer taught. I know Barge did. And uh, Dr. Messer asked these uh, people that were in that class, he said, who do you think that is? And you'd be surprised, but there's several guys, a lot of them preachers, said, well, that's Jesus, because that sounds like Jesus right there, doesn't it? Doesn't that kind of sound like him? He's going to be given a crown, he's going to conquer, da 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 you're talking about the end times. <clears throat> but the thing is, when you... <laughs> When you read the whole story, when you read everything that's going on, Jesus was the only one that was worthy to open the seals. <laughs> so guess what? It ain't Jesus on that first horse. Folks, that first, that first horse is Antichrist. It's the false peace that comes into being, first of all. And remember, when, when we're as Christians, we're raptured out of here. People are going to be looking for somebody that's going to tell them good things. Don't deliver them. Just like right now, for instance. Can you, can you think about, there, now there's different ideas. Personally, I think President Trump has done a good job with what's going on. But there are a lot of people that don't. But whether it's here, especially right now, if you think about the whole world, because we don't know about very much about a lot of these leaders around the world, just what we see, but we don't know them that well. But if somebody, when there's something going on like it's going on right now, if all of a sudden a man appeared and he seemed to have all the answers. Wow. Would people not want to follow him just like that? That's, that's the Antichrist. That's the first seal. The second seal is a red horse, and it's symbolic of war. You think war is bad now, folks? It's going to be worse once we're raptured out of here. The third seal is a black horse with a man holding uh, balances or scales. And he's weighing money for grain. And this represents famine. There's going to be all kinds of famine. With everything going on, folks, there's going to be all kinds of famine that's going to, that's going to take place uh, at that time. And then the fourth horse is a pale horse, and he's the only one that actually given a name. His name is Death. The pale horse, his name is Death. Now, when you first started hearing some of this stuff when, when COVID-19 first hit, and you heard these things like millions of people dying, Wow, did that not get your attention? At the time here that Jesus is talking about, folks, that's nothing. There are going to be people wiped out across this world. People are going to be dying from famine, from earthquakes, from the pestilence, all this disease spread throughout the world. People are going to be dying. Vast, vast numbers. Now, when you think about all that, you think, man, that scares me a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> We don't, need, we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be scared. Why? Because everything that we see happening, folks, everything that we see happening today, we need to realize that our redemption draws nigh. Or in other words, it's soon. Jesus' coming is soon. He's allowing, I believe, He's allowing all this to happen 
to open up the eyes of people. I do, I do agree with David Wilkerson. I really believe this could be, this could be the third great awakening in our country. People to see. And folks, I heard one guy preaching, I guess it was last Sunday. He said the answer to the coronavirus is the church. <laughs> the answer to the coronavirus is the church. We, when we go out wherever we go, and by the way, let me caution you about how you go and where you go. But when you go, you let people know that the Lord's in control. I'm just trusting in Him. He's coming back someday. And you might tell the people you're talking to, you better be ready. <laughs> Get ready. Jesus is coming back someday. And He's coming back soon. Heard one church had on their marquee. You think this is bad. Miss the rapture. <laughs> Miss the rapture. Because it's, this, this is just not even, it doesn't even come close to how it's going to be. After Jesus comes for His church. Now let me say this, I'm going to, I'm going to pray here in a moment. And uh, again, I've mentioned at the start, we wouldn't be doing the normal invitation of, of people uh, coming forward because we're trying to, we're trying to uh, be, be cautious. <clears throat> and, uh, but you have on your bulletins, you have that flap, okay? And uh, if there's a decision, I'm going to pray, and if there's a decision that, uh, that you need to make, are making, just, just put your name and, uh, and, and check something on it, write something on it real quickly. And when you go out, the offering place back there, just drop it either in a plate or on, on the table back there. <clears throat> Father, in Jesus' name, I am so thankful that we were able to come and be here today. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's here. And Lord, I know that all of us, Lord, we want what's right for us, our families, for our church family, for our nation. And Lord, we know that you have given us the, the promise that you love us, you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. You've given us the promise that you're coming back for us someday. And as the song said, when we look around, Lord, we see signs are appearing everywhere. So Lord, help us to want to live to bring honor and glory to you and to keep our eyes toward the eastern sky looking for your return at any moment. And Father, we pray that as we leave this place today that we'll go out and we will tell other people about you. Lord, we pray that one of the things that you're using this for is just sort of light a fire under uh, all of us as Christians, Lord, that we can't, we can't be silent. Lord, we've got to tell people uh, about you and about your love and about being able to go to heaven when they trust Jesus as personal Savior. But Lord, if they don't, uh, then uh, the Bible teaches that they will wind up in a devil's hell. So Lord, help us to... Share with people the good news of Jesus. Please dismiss us with your love. Lord, we look forward to being together again next Sunday. We pray that you'll be with all of our people, those that are here, those that couldn't come. <clears throat> Father, we pray that you'll be uh, with us as, as uh, individuals. Lord, we know that all of us are going uh, through things in our own individual lives, Lord. And so we have uh, specific needs. And Lord, we pray that you'll meet those needs according to your will and supply every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, whether that's comfort that is needed, we know that some really need comfort, Lord. We really uh, need to be able to feel that you're, that you're with us, Lord, as we walk through valleys. So we pray that you'll give that comfort, Lord, there. <clears throat> now again, dismiss us with your love. Give us a great Lord's Day on this Mother's Day. We thank you again for all of our mothers that are here, our mothers that are still living, and those that are already with you that we look forward to seeing someday. Please dismiss us with your love. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> now let me encourage you when, you when you go out, 